promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome Cheap Shot Nation to your Wrestlemania Backlash review right here on Cheap Shot Entertainment. Once again, you are the Cheap Shot Nation, I am your host Luke and we're going to take you through all of the action from Wrestlemania Backlash on the 16th of May 2021. It came from the Yuangling Center in Tampa, Florida and boy was this one good. If you want to find out what happened and you've not already seen the show, go and watch the show first and then come back for the review and let us know what you thought because I thought this was a humdinger. So we're going to kick off this review with none other than the kickoff show and obviously the kickoff show is where they talk about all the storylines that are going off and for once in WWE on a pay-per-view all of the storylines actually made sense and they were built up pretty well and that's probably because there was a big gap in between Wrestlemania and Wrestlemania Backlash bearing in mind it was about five or six weeks previous gives you an idea really doesn't it and the next pay-per-view which happens to be Hell in a Cell is another four weeks away so they've got plenty of time to build that and you know build into the pay-per-view but let's get going with the kickoff show it is the US Championship Open Challenge curiously without the championship on the line but Sheamus would come down to the ring issue his Open Challenge and say fella even though the championship's not on the line, I'm going to open up my US Championship Challenge. And none other than Rick O'Shea comes down. And let me tell you, it's nice to see two red-blooded Irish wrestlers in the US Championship match. Rick O'Shea did really, really well in this one. But Sheamus just beat the snot out of him. Gave a good account of himself, shows that Ricochet needs to be used more on the main roster. He proved everything in this match, but he would succumb to the bigger body of Sheamus in this one. Didn't get a chance to do all of his flippy stuff, but he did get quite a lot of it in. Um, Ricochet, Ricochet tried to start fast on Sheamus. It wasn't long before Sheamus would assert his dominance being the much stronger of the two and uh, it was definitely size over speed in this one and size eventually won out as Rick O'Shea goes up to the top, misses his 450 sort of cannonball splash type thing and Sheamus smashes him with a brogue kick. This one is and was really, really good for a kickoff show match. Sheamus wins. I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five. A great showing and showcase of Ricochet, formerly of the wrestlers that aren't being used, but then go into the 24 7 championship category. Yes, get, get Ricochet on the main roster to have him going for the US Championship but out of all this I just can't help that he would be much better on Smackdown and much better used on Smackdown than he is on Raw but I'm all for this this is good I've seen Ricochet versus Drew McIntyre in Nottingham and it was really really good so let's get some more of that we start the main show with the Raw Women's Championship. It is a triple threat match between the champion Rhea Ripley, former champion Asuka and former champion Charlotte who has been inserted into this match because she is Charlotte. No doubt she brought up the ante in this one and let me tell you something, this was a fantastic opener and a fantastic showcase of the women's division and what they can do given a little bit of time and it's rolling on from Wrestlemania of course Rhea Ripley having a really good match 
with Asuka. Now what I said on that particular show is that these two didn't have a lot of chemistry, they've obviously worked on that. This match just worked and it worked so well and it was so entertaining that just inserting Charlotte, there's no doubt doubting her pedigree, her ability to just elevate any match that she's in and she did that here but the right person did win. Now all three of these women got their shots in throughout the throughout the match but it would be of course no DQ rules, triple threat rules so there was a lot of fighting on the outside and they made use of that all the way through as well with the use of the barricades, the tables and everything else they could possibly think of. Um, superplex, we get the first main spot of the card of the match as well, superplex from Rhea Ripley and Asuka on Charlotte but this leads to a double chop block and a double natural selection Charlotte stacking them up not getting the pin she's not quite turned into the female version of Roman Reigns just yet everything breaks down as each try to get the upper hand on the next but this leads to Asuka charging in on Charlotte who delivers the big boot but the momentum takes her off the apron this gives Rhea Ripley the chance to hit the Riptide for the win retaining the championship and the Rhea Ripley train moves on to the next challenge she gets the pin on Asuka Charlotte's not very happy about this but I am because Rhea Ripley is awesome I'm going to give this one four cheap shots out of five and very much well deserved on this one the ladies have finally got their time to shine great opener and a fantastic way to showcase the Raw Women's Division tag titles on the line next it is the Dirty Dogs that is Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler versus the Mysterios of Ray and Dominic of course Dominic earlier in the show, in fact on the kickoff show, got his, got his ass beaten by Rude and Ziggler lifting a piece of plastic and dropping it on him. He was selling the ribs all the way through. Ray said, no you can't go out there, I'm going to take this myself. And of course what happens, Ray Mysterio does really really well here. I was expecting a pow, a zap and a biff all the way through this because Rey Mysterio's outfit was absolutely awesome based on the Adam West Batman and yes it was great and I am going to put those words in here when I do that with the noise because I can anyway um, so we get on to the match now this was a classic case of Batman versus the dastardly villains as he tries to take on two of them succumbing eventually to the numbers game but you know what Rey Mysterio did really well here in the in the early going really showcasing what he was all about back in the day the ultimate underdog and um, the numbers don't lie in this one because Ray had a 141 and two third percent chance of winning as soon as Dominic hit the ring because you know he's like no I'm not going to tag you in man because you're injured but he did and then it was like a cut off and uh, the Dirty Dog's like yeah 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 we're going to win we're going to win and then they didn't because Double DDT gives Ray Mysterio time to shine Dominic hits the ring, Ray hits the sliding sunset bomb on Ziggler into the barricade as Dominic hits a beautiful frog splash looking up at his real pappy in the sky as he delivers it and picking up the champions the first ever stepfather stepson duo to win the championship because we all know that Dominic Mysterio is really Eddie Guerrero's yes that was a storyline in WWE back in 2005 anyway <laughs> um, 
yeah really good match this one I really enjoyed this one and I'm gonna give it another four four cheap shots out of five it was very much deserved history was made in this one at Wrestlemania Backlash and it was good so far a really entertaining show and with the short shortage of matches made the matches actually better because they were given time to work and that is the key in wrestling give the people time to do what they do and not get like a million matches all in one night um, history absolutely brilliant first ever father and son tag team champions new champions on Smackdown in the Mysterio. Now and Johnny Drip Drip lets the zombies out. Yes there were zombies at Wrestlemania Backlash all the way through. We got advertisements for Dave Batista's new film Army of the Dead which looks absolutely badass by the way. I'm gonna go and see that one. I expect the review over on Quick Shot Reviews as soon as that one comes out. But they get released they turn out to be the Lumberjacks in the next match, which is the Lumberjack match between The Miz and Damian Priest, who hasn't really had a chance to shine as yet. But, you know what, this match was fun for what it was. I see a lot of people complaining online about how bad this was, the worst booking decision ever, the creative just going crazy. No, someone paid them and they put zombies in the match around the ring it's it's fine this is wrestling it's not real it's not real life it's entertainment and boy howdy was I entertained by this as Johnny Drip Drip got rip ripped over the barrier and potentially eaten by zombies amazingly they were very tame when the match was on because they didn't climb in the ring but as soon as the match was over they climbed in the ring and ate the Miz as well the bloodthirstiness of the zombies cannot be contained now for what this match was I thought it was okay and uh, there's not much I can say about this uh, both trying to stay away from the zombies as you would in a normal lumberjack match anyway so why not I don't I don't particularly I didn't particularly like it I didn't particularly hate it I was entertained by it it was interesting and it was something different and for the rest of the pay-per-view you know I, I'm not going to remember this pay-per-view for this particular point it's a talking point don't get me wrong but it ain't any AEW exploding ring not exploding ring because you know they didn't advertise it as anything else I mean they didn't actually advertise it it was just something different um, so there's no comparison to this I'm going to remember this pay-per-view for it being really good not because of the zombies the zombies are an added extra um, so drip drip gets rip dripped in the lumberjack match and then Priest hits the lights uh, so it hits the lights to pick up the victory which is a uh, crossroads basically and uh, yeah the Miz then gets eaten um, it was basically a movie trailer for Army of the Dead and I do feel for Damien Priest not so much for the Miz because he's already he's already made his name in wrestling he can go about doing these things but since Damien Priest has come up to the main roster he's not really had a serious match he was in the celebrity match at Wrestlemania which is fine he was at Wrestlemania in his first sort of month or so so he must be well thought of and then in this match it was zombies uh, that stole the show but you know Damien Priest will have his time and he's shown that he's willing to do these kind of things and that is fine because that will appease the McMahons and say right okay you can have a title shot now so that is just how wrestling works in WWE but yeah it was a good break up of the rest of the show I'm gonna give this 1.5 cheap shots out of 5 it doesn't deserve anything more it gets an extra 0.5 cheap shots half a cheap shot because of the creativity of it but 
I neither like or dislike it. I just thought it was there. <laughs> but I'm not going to go get really angry about it because it was quite fun. And there you go. <laughs> that's, that's me from Cheap Shot. Women's Championship up for grabs next. It is the reigning defending champion Bianca Belair who has a victory over Sasha Banks at WrestleMania versus the former tag team partner of said former champ, Bay Lay, in WrestleMania Backlash. And you know, what way to build up a new star than to beat both of the former tag team women's tag team champions, the first ever women's tag team champions in the modern era, um, have a win singularly over both. Um, curiously, I, I haven't really, <coughs> we haven't really seen Sasha Banks anywhere, so I don't know, don't know whether she's injured a little bit or whatever. But <clears throat> yeah, Bailey was a good stand-in for that, and you would have expected there to be a, like a rematch. But one thing I noted about WrestleMania Backlash is that there wasn't really any rematches, so to speak. I mean, there were a lot of new creative decisions, which I really like. Obviously, the Priest Miz match was kind of a rematch but it wasn't um and yeah it was this was what made wrestlemania backlash quite interesting and quite entertaining when i watched it um but we get a good start from the champ bianca belair taking it to the former champ bailey the former longest reigning smackdown women's champion bailey might add and uh, Bailey shows all of her cunning and experience and comes back and starts beating up Bianca Belair. Um, but this is why Bianca Belair is champion, showing that she belongs in the main event on SmackDown. She is dominant for the next part of the match. We go to the outside, we have some fighting. Belair picks up Bailey, drops her on the apron, showing her strength there. Um, and uh, you know, outside of a few attempts, gets caught. Um, Belair with the roll up um, after Bailey tries to use the ropes to get the pin. Belair with the roll up and uses her hair to wrap up Bailey's feet, so she can't kick out. There's no momentum there. Belair retains the championship, and I find myself very entertained by this. Why? I don't know. I just thought it was quite funny because the bad guy got their comeuppance in the end and isn't that what wrestling is all about it's just one giant pantomime and in a pantomime you always want the bad guy to get their comeuppance and that is exactly what happened to Bailey. she carried on complaining after the match trying to explain that she shouldn't have lost and that's what makes Bailey awesome Bianca Belair retains the championship I'm going to give this one three cheap shots out of five. Not quite as good as the Raw Tag Team Championship. Uh, sorry, the Raw Women's Championship to me, this one. But these two women had really good chemistry. And in the end, I get, again, I was entertained. And that is the goal here at WrestleMania Backlash. Another great match. And now we move on to the main event, which is the WWE Championship match between Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, and King Kong. Otherwise known as Bobby Lashley versus Strowman versus Drew McIntyre. This is everything you want from three huge guys just beating the snot out of each other. I just feel, felt like, much like the Rey Mysterio match where you should have had the Biff, Baff and the Bang and the Bop. This one could have benefited from having some little tiny buildings made out of cardboard that they could smash. Um, <laughs> this one was just really fun. These, two, these three guys just beat the tar out of each other all the way through. Bobby Lashley goes through the LED lighting boards Drew McIntyre goes through a table after he's been curled by Braun Strowman. This is not a small guy, we're talking about 350 pounds here. And he gets curled, put through the table, and Bobby Lashley still sneaks up 
for the victory in the end. Strowman even flew at one point trying to take both Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre out. I've never seen a Strowman fly until WrestleMania Backlash. Colour me impressed. So Lashley goes out really early. He goes through the LED lighting boards at the back of the stage which is what I mentioned earlier. He didn't then disappear so he's going to turn up somewhere. Strowman then gets the upper hand on Drew McIntyre. We go straight back to the ring and Strowman charges in, takes out the ring post. Drew McIntyre hits the Mishinoku driver, a huge Mishinoku driver here by Drew McIntyre on Braun Strowman. Strowman puts Drew through the table as I mentioned, drags the former champ back to the ring before it getting hit by a Claymore. Bobby Lashley comes in, throws Drew McIntyre out. Classic heel victory here. Bobby Lashley hits the spear and Bobby Lashley retains. I'm happy about this one. Love Drew McIntyre but I'm really interested in what Bobby Lashley is being allowed to do here because it's new and I like it and it's something different to what we've had for the last year. So why not? We're coming out of a pandemic. Why not make it different? Why the heck not? And this was different. Bobby Lashley pins Braun Strowman for the win, protects Drew McIntyre, makes Bobby Lashley look like an absolute beast. And I'm happy. Four cheap shots out of five. Everything that Godzilla versus King Kong should have been in the movie world, this was exactly that. Whereas that film had a great ending, but the rest of it was bad. This as a whole pay-per-view was really, really good. Um, just three huge dudes beating the tar out of each other over and over and over again. And let me tell you something, I could actually watch this one again inside Hell in a Cell. Can you imagine what these three guys would do to each other inside that structure? It's something that I'm not sure I ever wanted or ever even thought about until right this moment. Let's make it happen WWE, Hell in a Cell, rematch, triple threat, these three guys beating each other up inside a metal box. Yes, 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 that is what I want in my wrestling entertainment. Universal Championship match is your very last match, not the WWE Championship match, I just really enjoyed that one. But I enjoyed this one just as much. It is Roman Reigns, the head of the table, pin him, sorry, smash him, stack him, pin him. Roman Reigns versus the Swiss cyborg Cesaro. Again, it was new, and I really like new, something different. Cesaro, this is his first time going for a main championship in WWE. He's been there for 10 years. He was at the outset of NXT as well. He was through the indies to start with, came into WWE, had so much potential and the only things he's won is seven tag team championships with Sheamus, oh, with various people, mostly with Sheamus, which was cool because they are the bar and a US Championship and I think that's pretty much it and that for someone as good as Cesaro is bad just plain bad so I like this this was something new this is why Smackdown is the best show and always has been the best show hence the t-shirt for this one so now let's get through to the action um, so this one starts off by the numbers for Reigns, he starts off slow, Cesaro gets him out of his game, but as soon as he cuts him off, he goes back to being Reigns, the Reigns show, whatever, the Reigns down in Africa, whatever you want to call it, it goes back to being a by the numbers match. Even Roman Reigns now is so healed that he says, 
you do this because you like it, I do this for the paycheck. So it's just like an even meaner version of Brock Lesnar only much better at actually wrestling and doing a long match. Anyway, uh, Cesaro makes a comeback of course, the hope spot and the pace is slowed back down again by Roman Reigns and of course that suits Roman Reigns these days because he likes to beat people up. And just like that Cesaro goes back on top with a series of huge European uppercuts including a pop-up European uppercut and um, through the barricade hitting a cross body as well. At this point Reigns comes back, he smells blood as Reigns gets the advantage and he starts to work the arm, dropping Cesaro over the turnbuckle post thing in between and keeping hold of the arm after hitting a huge clothesline. Little, little details here people, little details that mean so much towards the end of the match. And the well placed boot hits Cesaro in the face. Is this the beginning of the end for Cesaro? Who knows Cesaro? No, he fights back. Cross face broken by Roman Reigns again playing on the little details of having the arm worked on and not quite having the strength to keep the match on. Roman Reigns hits a powerbomb on the challenger. Roman Reigns now definitely smells blood, hits an alligator roll, love that move, just takes the opponent out of the match whilst asserting dominance and that is exactly what Roman Reigns is here to do and locks in a guillotine choke lock thing. Cesaro almost breaks out, a little bit of hope and Reigns just locks it back in, cinches it up wraps the legs round like an anaconda and the prey is gone. Referee stops the match, Roman Reigns wins. This match was great, much like the rest of the pay-per-view and I am happy. I'm a happy man with this pay-per-view. Really, really good and of course Roman Reigns still Dominant. Who is going to beat Roman Reigns? I'm not bored of this title reign at all. And I, I'm a Roman Reigns convert. I always thought he was quite good anyway. Didn't like the fact that he shoved in my face all the time. A bit like Charlotte. She's really good, but she shoved in her faces all the time. She goes away, she comes back, she gets, you know, there's no real change of character or it's just change, change, change. Roman Reigns is exactly what he says on the tin. This is what Cena should have done a long time ago but they had to keep him face to make all the colourful t-shirts and sell the t-shirts to the kids. Now Roman Reigns has turned, he's doing well and it works, it works so freaking well. Best match of the card, 4.5 cheap shots out of 5 very close to being a full five and a perfect match. In fact, I probably should have just given this the perfect match because it was pretty darn good. And throughout the past year, since Roman Reigns has been champion, he has had a lot of damn near perfect matches. This show was absolutely awesome from start to finish, but it's not finished yet. Jey Uso attacks Cesaro and Rollins picks the bones like the vulture that he is. Of course furthering that storyline, but who's going to go for the championship next? Is it going to be a triple threat match between Reigns, Rollins and Cesaro? Who knows? I like Seth Rollins in this one. He's wearing an utterly awful suit, but he's challenging his inner Batman villain. There's a lot of DC references here in this show where he's challenging his inner Batman villain, a bit like Harvey Dent, you know, was the good guy, now he's going towards the bad guy role, the really bad guy role, and yeah, I like Rollins in this one, I really do. Great pay-per-view from start to finish. If you have seen WrestleMania Backlash from the 16th of May 2021 at the Young Glang Center in Tampa, Florida, then let us know what you thought of this one in the comments section down below or join us on any of our social media channels. 
link tree in the description below. There's also a link there to Squared Circle Jobbers, my good buddies who we do the Prediction League with going forward, my podcast, The Big Bosses Podcast, which is doing really well, and the other channels within the Cheap Shot Nation, including the gaming channel, which is doing really well, and the movie channel as well. And as cinemas open up, we get a chance to see more new films. So that one, I'm sure, is just going to go from strength to strength. This has been the main channel, Cheap Shot Entertainment. I've been your host, Luke. You are the Cheap Shot Nation. And this is all the action and my review of WrestleMania Backlash. If you've not seen this one, go and watch it. I try not to give you too much information about the matches. So just to give you a bit of an insight and say so you'll go and watch the matches yourself, go and watch the pay-per-view, it is very much worth it. Anyone comparing this to an AEW show needs their head looking at. It was really good from start to finish. And I'm going to say controversially here, possibly, that this was better than Blood and Guts because it was better paced, the, be the matches were better overall and it wasn't just relying on one big match to sell the whole thing. So there you go, that's my take on it. What's yours? Let me know. You are the Cheap Shot Nation and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Hiya!